What's up, Gooners? Thanks, guys, for everybody who participated in the show last night. It was, these are always fun to do because you guys make it so much fun and so great. And it's just like a camaraderie of Arsenal fans who just want to throw banter, have a bit of fun and say it like it is. And it's a great platform, guys, for you to come in and have your say. And I really appreciate every one of you that follows the live podcasts. This Wednesday will be our 30th. So I'm really looking forward to that. On to the match, though. Everybody had, we picked our team sheet yesterday and it was a very adventurous team sheet. Caused a lot of rubble in the one-on-one forums, but you know what? This is what we think is the best way forward in order for us to win. And I said it on the podcast, I said, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you go in there with the people who have been letting you down all the time, that's pretty much what's going to happen again. We need players to be able to facilitate defensively and offensively all over the field. We need to stamp out their strengths and weaknesses and hopefully we'll be able to overcome that. So I'm going to give you my top five reasons why Arsenal might be able to walk away from home with a win. So let's go with number one. The team are one of the resilient teams so far in 2020. And I think we could use that to our advantage. If we look at the current form, Arsenal in the last six, even to eight games, Arsenal are second in the current form, only behind the championship runners, Liverpool. And if you took those eight games and started the season in the first eight games, Arsenal would be in second place. That's how well he has this team running. So we cannot forget about the changes he's made, the philosophies, the different formations and tactics. Everything that he's put in seems to be pulling a trigger inside of the players and getting the best out of them. And this is the one reason why the guys like Ozil and Xhaka have been starting in the team, because he's been able to pull something out of them that previously wasn't happening in the team. So that's one of the things for me, guys, that the fact that the current form right now is solid. Number two, there's no home advantage. What we've seen from football in Spain, which just kicked off the other day, and in the Bundesliga, shows that without the fans... City have no advantage of playing at home. These things are going to worry teams a lot. Arsenal sort of travel away okay, especially under Arteta. They've looked quite resilient under him. So I'm I'm looking for us to take advantage of this. Remember when we looked at the Bundesliga and it was like the away teams have outscored the home teams by a factor of two to one. So imagine that. The away teams are scoring double the amount of goals than the whole team was scoring. So uh, that, that's also a concern for us, don't get me wrong, when we're at the Emirates and teams come there, uh, Chelsea won there, they were the last team to really turn us over, we got beaten by Olympiacos as well, and when we should have really put up a much better performance, so I don't really think that the Emirates thing is really going to do anything to, to hurt us, I think it, it bodes well for us more because we can go away with the understanding that we'd be able to get a result, so I think The fact that there's no home field advantage is definitely going to be a plus for us. Number three, confidence. The players are reacting to Arteta in a way that they never have reacted with Emery. From a tactics and philosophy standpoint, didn't really have the shape of the team right, didn't really have a plan going into the game. This team, over the last 10 or 12 games under Arteta, have had a plan. They've executed that plan and they've seen the benefits of those plans. So many people say, oh yeah, they haven't won a game. Well, in fact, they've won three, but they've just looked resilient. They've had five clean sheets in the last eight games. And that shows you, yes, you know, yes, I know there's a lot of draws, but the whole thing is to stop the rot. When a team has only had two wins in the last 17 and you're walking in there, the impact you're looking for is to stop losing, stop the rot. And Arsenal have definitely done that. And they have the confidence now to go forward and get a result at the Etihad Stadium. Number four, guys, Aubameyang. Now, the one thing we see with teams in big games, and that's Harry Kane, Rashford, Aguero, Mane, Salah, where we always see the top teams, stars, come out and play in big games. And I remember... When One time when we played Manchester City, Aubameyang hardly had a touch in the first half. Another game, he had a penalty and missed it. And 
you cannot afford to have your big players not turn up in these kind of games. These are the games that that big players shine. These are the occasions that everybody should look up to to give 150%. Run your socks off. Blood and sweat. And we actually haven't really seen that. Since Ramsey left the team, we haven't really seen the blood and sweat type performances from t consistently. Let's let's be fair. Especially when we beat Spurs at home 4-2 and the one all draw from Liverpool. I keep referencing those because in those two games, I haven't seen us fight. Yeah? Forget everything. 11 against 11, man on man, fight. Yeah? I haven't seen us fight like that. If we had that attitude in Baku, we would have won the Europa Cup. And that's what it really comes down to. It's all about attitude. And I think with Aubameyang, he needs to go into that game with the attitude that he's going to dominate Man City's back four. Seriously, he's got to make, put extra effort in his runs, make more runs, yeah, backtrack and help the defence better. All those things, we're going to need a proper captain's performance. If he doesn't do that, then I'm sorry, this team has no chance of winning. Preparation. Now, Arteta has been at Manchester City for three or four years. He knows how they work. The three years that he's been there, he's been able to accumulate the information and the tactics. And also, when it hasn't worked, he's been able to sit down with Guardiola and find out why they've lost games, why they haven't won games, why it didn't work, yeah? And they've been able to analyze that to a point where Arteta understands within himself what is the problem in Manchester City's foothold. What is it that we can do to disrupt their game? That's what he knows and that's what he needs to implement in this game. He needs to find a way to shut them off, to shut off the passing lanes and stifle the midfield and force the ball to go backward instead of forward. And also not to let these players, don't give them the space, don't sit off them for 10 yards. Get right up in their face. Choose the right angles. Get your positioning right. Cut off the passing lanes. That will stop these players like De Bruyne and Sterling and Villa who are running at defenders and just scaring the living daylights out of them. If we can get that compactness and help each other out in the midfield and get tight, work hard, then I think that our work will pay off. It's all about preparation. This team has to have the right tactics. It's got to have the right formation, the right formation switches. We talked about, again, in the podcast yesterday, when the team is at a base, it's a 4-2-3-1. When they're attacking... It's a 3-2-5 because the win-backs push up. And then when they don't have the ball, it's more of a 4-4-2. You try and keep that triangular shape so that you're stopping all the balls from coming through and clogging up those passing lanes. And that is key. That reaction speed from each different formation is speed. You, as soon as something happens and you got the ball, bang, you got to switch into that right formation. As soon as something happens and you don't have the ball in use possession, bang, you got to switch back into defense. All these things have to be lightning quick and everybody has to be switched on. And Arteta needs to ensure that these guys know the plan. Look, he's been at home for three months working with these players, telling them what to do, how to go about it, how to get ready for this game. I hope that we see come this week that Arsenal are ready for Manchester City and they are hungry for the win. And those guys are my five reasons why Arsenal will beat Manchester City this week. Let me know what you guys think about it. Again, guys, thanks for your support. Like and subscribe to the channel and let's bring this home. I really, really do. Hope. I'm still going for a 2-2 draw, but real, let's hope that this team can bring back a result. Because if we can go up there and get a score draw, then it will show us that we have the confidence to move forward. That Everton game was pivotal for us. So that Everton game was key that we can go to and play another team who was at the top of the chain. Really good team Everton are. Don't disrespect those guys, yeah? Next season, they're going to be playing for a Champions League spot, just like we are. And we went there, and we turned them over, and it could have gone the other way as well. So that game gave us a lot of confidence. It came too soon in March, and I'm actually glad that we've had this break so we can get ready and get prepared for it. And I really do hope that we make ourselves accountable. So I'll leave it right there, guys. Peace out. Right back at you. Peace and love, man. Nice one.